The news is just a few hours old that Britain has voted to leave the EU. Here are five ways of responding to the new situation with empathy. First, acknowledge your own physical response to this. Is it shock? Did you find your heart in your mouth as you found out this morning? Is it fear of what's coming next? Maybe things are so hard right now economically, trying to find work that's satisfying and that pays a living wage. And there's a fear that things are just going to get worse. Is it still disbelief? How could this happen when so many institutions and commentators were speaking for Remain, maybe the majority of your friends? Does this question take you back into the shock, which makes you hold your breath a little? Are you in a place of overwhelm, as you cannot imagine the chaos and the work that lies ahead to remove the UK from the EU? Does it quite simply change everything that provides order in your world? And right now, the ground you stand on feels very shaky indeed. Or do you have a certain relief? A kind of hunch that this is the best, best path for the country and you have a quiet settling inside you? Or are you euphoric, overjoyed that despite the leadership of both main parties, your strong desire for autonomy and independence feels reassured by what you hope this vote can achieve? Obviously, you can see I'm speaking to both Remain and Leave voters here. And although this podcast is really addressing those who want social change, more social equality and justice, and that Leave and Remain are just strategies that we all pinned a lot of hopes on to bring about this change. Most importantly, I want to practice speaking with empathy to those who have different views from myself. And that brings me on to the next point. Engage. Add your voice. Bring yourself more fully into questions around governance, even though part of you might have so long ago given up on even the hope of being represented in this system, so you've stepped away from engaging. When you consider what I'm suggesting here to engage more fully, what response do you have? Is it fear about stepping into an arena that doesn't quite feel safe for you, in which you don't trust that you will be heard, is it weariness from having been there, done that, got burnt out? Or is it a deep sense of strength, knowing that now is the time to fully step into your voice and your power? Most importantly, speak to people who have differing views from yourself. Engage with the enemy, be that my Nigel Farage and his UKIP supporters, or with people who are upholding the overarching bureaucracies, wherever they are, that are so bewildering. Speak with empathy to your neighbour in his 70s, who is so bewildered by the chaotic systems surrounding him, perhaps exasperated by the months and months of waiting for an operation in the NHS, and so deeply needs a sense of autonomy and a structure that feels manageable in his country, that he voted leave and he might vote UKIP. Listen for the deeper essence of what he says when he blames immigrants for his frustrations. If you are white, like me, this could be an important task you can do to tackle racism and xenophobia, blaming innocent people for the structures that are failing us all. Add your voice for peace. Add your voice so that no one or no groups among us will get scared with this Brexit vote, that the rest of us will abandon them. Let's just say that this Brexit vote might bolster right-wing approaches. Add your voice so that no group becomes an acceptable target for, for hatred. We are still integrating the Orlando massacre, which targeted the gay and lesbian community. And I'm remembering Rabbi Michael Lerner's call for Jews to stand with Muslims in the face of growing Islamophobia. By this, I don't mean adding your voice to groups of people who share the same views as you. I mean reaching out beyond your world. The important thing here is how to take care of yourself as you do this. It is possible to speak with people from different perspectives and not lose your ground. And the only way to do this is by employing empathy for yourself and empathy for the other person to humanise them even if you disagree with their perspective. So point number three is to bring empathy to every step of what comes next. So if you, like I did, had a lurch in my stomach when I heard that Donald Trump hails Britain for taking back their country, 
You might feel anger that Trump wants to use Brexit to add momentum to his campaign and a sense of power, powerlessness and fear about where we are headed. Just acknowledge what's going on for you and engage. Keep adding your voice. Expressing your deep fear in response to views that provoke this in you would be so refreshing in the face of ingrained habits in the political arena which hang on trying to be right and making the other person wrong. More likely than not, you, like me, will have an emotional response to whatever comes next out of the mouths of David Cameron, Boris Johnson, Nigel Farage, Donald Trump. Acknowledging this, I hope, will avert more despair, stuckness and paralysis. Bring in empathy to every step of what comes next. The practice of empathising with or humanising the enemy is no easy task and you need to. Point four, get support. Seek out writers and political commentators whose voice brings you hope and clarity, whether that's Yanis Varoufakis, Naomi Klein, Rabbi Michael Lerner, Mickey Kashtan, George Monbiot or Russell Brand, to name a tiny few. And nourish yourself with meditation, connection to nature, mindfulness or whatever you choose so you can stay present to the task ahead for social justice, inclusion and people-centred governance. Finally, connection. This Brexit vote changes everything and also changes nothing. We are still faced with the monumental task of changing consumer and industrial habits to avert climate change. We are still faced with a system that reverts to force and violence to make things happen and to make people conform to what is happening. Find your allies, people you can work with, people who it is a joy to be around, people who support your growth to become stronger and have a more powerful voice. And think about connection in an empowered and inclusive way. Of course connecting to those you have a natural and easy alignment with, but also to those who are saying things that are painful to hear or that you think are dangerous for the world. Finding ways to connect with those who are different from us could, could save us from future tragedies. Every connection matters. <laughs>